It is 7 o'clock on a record hot day. I think the last time we met, the heat was on. Um, I remember it being pretty cold out. So here we go with our, our summer. And uh, so we are uh, have a quite large development agreement uh, or agreement uh, agenda here tonight. So it's good to see so many people here. And uh, we will begin as we always do with the Pledge of Allegiance. And we're honored to have uh, Pastor Tim Krupski from the Lord of Life L Lutheran Church. Um, and his wife Karen is with us. And uh, thank you for saying our uh, invocation before we begin. And I know you may all remember Tim is, uh, was one of the founding members of the Westfield Youth Assistance Program. I'll never forget, Tim. Thank you so much for doing all that. Join me, please. pray with me. Heavenly Father, we come tonight and we thank you for the beautiful spring summer day that you've given to us and especially as the warm weather now moves into our area, we pray for all would, who would have to work out in the outdoors in our community and particularly we remember our public safety officers. Pray that you give them safety and bless them as they grow in terms of their size and numbers. Allow for them to serve us well. We pray tonight for the meeting and for all the matters that are before the council. We pray that you'd give wisdom and that you'd bring uh, godly and just decisions. And, and we pray your blessing upon all those who've committed their lives to service in this capacity. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. President Ake, you ready to go? Yes, sir. Uh, Tonight we have Pat Luteris stepping in for our clerk treasurer. Thank you, Pat, for being with us tonight. Will you please uh, call the roll and notice the presence of the quorum? Mr. Ake? Here. Mr. Lehman? Here. Mr. Horte? Here. Mr. Hoover? Here. Mr. Edwards? Here. Ms. Fulgerick? Here. Mr. Keene? Here. You have a seat. Thank you, Pat. At uh, this time, there are no changes to be noted in, to the agenda. And I consider uh, approval of the minutes. Do I have a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, I have a motion by Cindy Fulgerick and a second by Bob Horke. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I'd ask the council to uh, approve the minutes as stated. They signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Minutes are approved, seven to zero. Moving on to claims. Uh, do I have a motion to approve claims as stated? Move to approve claims. I have a motion by Dr. Mark Keene. Is there a second? Second. I have a second by Mr. Edwards. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, I'd ask the Council to approve claims signify by saying aye in favor of approval of claims as stated. Aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Hearing none, the motion carries seven to zero. All right, tonight it's, uh, I'm very proud to announce a special presentation about uh, OpenGov and our platform. It will go live. Uh, Tammy Hamford, a uh, group of citizens and uh, uh, some counselors and Joe Edwards led that effort and it was a monumental task to bring this to life and we're going to hear a little bit more about that. Uh, Mr. Mayor, would you like to comment first Yeah, of all? thank you very much, Jim. Yeah, this, uh, this is a project we've been working on uh, a long time to uh, open up better the, uh, the, the transparency of all these confusing numbers of a municipal budget we uh, you know we we report in our budget uh, exactly in the manner of which we are required to do so by the uh, State Board of Accounts and the DLGF um, I guess to say it bluntly their language isn't real easy to 
digest and to read by, by many, except for somebody like Tammy who lives with it every day. So the, uh, the council, uh, Councilor Edwards, very, very key in this, in working with uh, Tammy, uh, John Rogers, uh, Chris Larson from IT, uh, the clerk treasurer's office, and Tammy has a, uh, a group of citizens she worked with to use this new uh, platform called OpenGov. I don't believe there's too many places in the state that are using it yet. I think it will be very prevalent. Um, but uh, Ms. Havard, if you would e explain a little more in detail for us. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Members of the council, OpenGov is now live. So you can go to our website, and this is open to the public. And under government, you'll see OpenGov tr Financial Transparency Portal under City Council. So when you click there, it will take you to a landing page, which will tell you a little bit about OpenGov, and it will also give you a 10-minute overview on the features in the product. Or you can just jump in and click on the link to the portal. So in the portal, just a few things that I want to highlight. You can watch the video in detail, and we'll have more information later. But you're not going to break the portal. So you can click around in here as much as possible and to, to drill down into the information and see the information. And from a citizen's perspective, we've also tried to make it easy to get the information that you're looking for without having to be a municipal finance expert. So you'll see on this left-hand side, there's views like what are the revenues for the property tax supported funds or what are the expenses? And you can drill down into these views. So if you're looking at the revenues and you wanna know what kind of taxes the city of Westfield receives, you would just click down into it and then it'll break it down further. And then you wanna see what funds the property tax supports, you can drill that into that further. You can also customize the views into whatever type of, of information that you want to see, you can control it. So right now we're looking at a pie graph, but say you're a bar chart person, you can click there, or a line chart to see the trending. You can also look at table information below. Also there's the share button that you can download to a spreadsheet or an image, and it can also share out to social media. But note that you also need to know what kind of filters that you're looking at when you're looking at these saved views because there can be misinformation if you are clicking in here and you click a fund that's not really relevant to property tax supported funds, for example. So you can see what filters are available. You can show revenues, you can show expenses, revenues versus expenses. You can also show this information broken down by revenue type, broken down by the funds, or by the departments. You also have slider bars at the bottom that you can get to the information easily. There's a property tax guide taken from the DLGF just so people can understand that a little bit better. We have annual reports, monthly reports. We have monthly cash balance reports as well as property tax rate per entity. So it's not necessarily just our financial information hooked up to our financial system that we can see, but we can see non-financial data as well. And that's where the community will come into play and where we can get feedback from the community members on what types of information that they wanna see in the future. It's also the perfect time being as we're starting the 2019 budget for feedback from the citizens as far as what types of information that they would like to see broken down. So this will be an ongoing dialogue with the, the community members, with council, with administration, to get the information to what the people want to hear. You heard us mention that we use beta testers in rolling out this product. So to get it to where it was, we didn't get it to the non-financial language by ourselves. So we had a group of four beta testers, Jill Doyle, Ron Moore, um, Larry Clarino, and Rebecca Gudeman. And they were instrumental in taking the municipal jargon and making it user-friendly and, and what types of information that you'd wanna see. Again, through those filters, you can, you can look at the information and get it down to whatever, whatever information you are looking for. The help button up here is also going to be very important. If there's something that's not on here or if you'd like to just ask a question, then you can click on it. It's got some information on municipal finance as well as a contact. 
So if you fill this information out and get a message, then I can get the answer to you and respond to you and we can work to make this better. We also have another potential for interaction, which is on Wednesday, we're going to do a lunch and learn on Facebook Live. So that's gonna be new and we're gonna get input from the citizens on how to use this tool. So if anyone has any questions on how to navigate through it, then we'll be able to address it at that time. Does anyone have any questions? Yes. Can you show how sometimes you include notes to explain sure. certain things? So on the reports, you'll notice that um, there's different reports. So it has this functionality, but again, once we start getting input from citizens, then that's where we'll be able to notate further. It could be very cumbersome if we notated everything, every single line item transaction in the system. But if we're getting a lot of questions through that help button up here, then we would be able to respond to it and add a notation. So an example of that would be in the Grand Park Monthly Report, I believe, it's in here, Cash Balance Report. <laughs> Trying to find where we put the... Yeah, so here you can see there's one note in this view. And so any notes would, would be shown right here and you can click on it and then it will show you the note information. And then like I said, this is where we have that interaction from the citizens in order to, if, we're keep, if we keep getting the same question over and over, then we can notate in it so that whenever anyone goes to it, then they would be able to see that note. Thank you very much, Tammy. It's yeoman's work done here, and uh, we appreciate it. All right, so moving along, we have no old business to conduct tonight, so we'll jump into the new business at hand. Um, first item up is uh, 18, Ordinance 1806, Grand Park PUD. This is a council introduction, as will all the, uh, the business tonight be. So, Kevin Todd, are you present? Okay. Mr. Skelton. I will do this Formerly one. Formerly Kevin I? Todd. Uh, good evening, members of the council. Before you this evening is the introduction for uh, the Grand Park PUD, which essentially uh, it takes in all of the uh, redevelopment authority owned real estate and in addition to that it includes uh, what is known as the uh, the pro x property and it, which is represented by lots two and lot five um, the real the purpose behind this is really to uh, set a framework for future land use approvals uh, within this area, it, the proposal as it stands today doesn't really change anything that's there uh, from a land use perspective, um, and it doesn't really alter any of the development standards that apply um, other than some of the platting requirements. Um, it is the intention of the city to uh, plat this property, and there are certain uh, standards within the currently applicable zoning regulations that would complicate if not prohibit that so it, this will address that as well and that's it's about as simple as that it's a big petition but it's a kind of a simple project all right thank you counselors any questions for mr skelton i just have have one it's kind of an odd one because i understand what you're trying to do um but you're using the ag sf1 underlying and then no minimums on, on most of the things and as long as it is a forced campus use, then it wouldn't have to go to an overlay. That's correct. That's the way it is today. So all it does is codify what's already there, really. I mean, the, in a, a public park type facility is a permitted use in the AGSF1 district. So it doesn't complicate anything that's there. Um, we, but this takes away all the minimum standards to set that piece up. Well, there, there really aren't any now 
We can talk about it more if, if you have questions. And if you have a better idea, I'm, I'm happy to listen to it, but that's the best I could come up with. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Just to be clear, too, these boundaries could be modified or changed a little bit depending on project coming forward. Yeah, it's the intention, and I, I should have covered this, um, that there are certain residual pieces out here that aren't necessary in order to operate the campus as it stands today. So this would allow the city, if it's so desired, it would require a, um, an action of a, a board, or if not, the, probably the council. Um, to, to sell any real estate, but it could be platted and sold to the extent that this, the city would like to do that. Right, and that's part, of, it's sort of contemplated. Yeah, there's certain little pieces that aren't, aren't needed and they could be sold, yes. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Yeah. Any other questions? All right, thank you, Matt. Uh, Ordinance 1810, 100% voluntary annexation, Osborne Trails Phase One. Pam Howard. Yes, thank you. Um, Mr. President, members of the council, Pam Howard with the Economic and Community Development Department. Before you this evening, we have a 100% voluntary annexation of approximately 80 acres to be part of the Osborne Trails development. This area is generally located at the northwest corner of 191st Street and Horton Road, and this is the first of three phases of this development planned to complete the annexation process this year. This is scheduled for public hearing tonight with a plan for adoption in June. I do have Tim Walter here with Platinum Properties. He does not plan to present, but is available for questions, as am I if you have any of staff. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Pam at this time? All right. Uh, this does require a public hearing tonight, and so I'll open the public hearing at 717. Did anybody have any comments? I'd like to speak to this issue tonight. Hearing or seeing none, I'll close the public hearing at 718. Are there any other comments by council members? All right, thank you. Uh, next item up for business is Ordinance 1811, the Lions Team PUD. It's uh, council introduction, and Ms. Howard again. Yes, thank you again. Pam Howard with Economic and Community Development Department. Before you this evening, I have a new PUD district to be known as Lions Team PUD to accommodate a real estate office. Uh, this site is located at 750 Liberty Drive within the Centennial Development. The existing building was constructed in 2000 and was previously used as, as a utility building for a local internet provider. Utility uses are permitted in all zoning districts. The petitioner, Mike Lyons, plans to acquire the property and use it as a real estate office. The purpose of this ordinance is to, to permit the office-related uses and also legalize existing nonconformities on the site. I do have Mike Lyons, the petitioner, here. He does not plan to make a presentation, but he's available for questions, as am I if you have any of staff. Thank you. Thank you. Councilors have any uh, comments or questions? I have, I have uh, one. This building resides within the subdivision of Centennial. It was part of the uh, uh, media facility and uh, that furnished t cave, cable and, and communications to that subdivision for a long time. That building is subject to right now the architectural standards in that district and so uh, with this PUD would that building in perpetuity and under this PUD be subject to the uh, architectural standards that currently exist within the Centennial HOA? The way it's written, as the building exists today, it, it would not be required to be upgraded to any standards that are not met. But if the building were to be expanded or if a new building were to, for some reason, be constructed on the site, it would need to comply with the UDO standards for businesses. That's not my question, though. Okay. So it, there are certain guidelines by the HOA in Centennial, and maybe Mike would care to address this, I don't know. But the underlying the, not the covenants, but the architectural standards exist to protect the whole subdivision from, let's say, um, 
certain signage required. Uh, they couldn't put up with lit signs, or they couldn't. And, and my concern is not so much with Mike Lyons, who owns the building now, because I think he'll do the right thing by the folks in that subdivision. And I just like that contemplated as this moves on to the APC, that there are certain things that need to come under, uh, the, that need to fall under the archi architectural standards of the that community. Yes, I'd be happy to let the petitioner address um, his exact plans for the building and what he would maybe plan in the future. I can say that we have incorporated signage standards into this ordinance, um, but as to whether that any additional HOA standards that are not regulated by the UDO as to whether they would apply, that would be something we need to discuss that, further. That's fine. I, I would look at to that as a condition, and, 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 and I hope that the, as it comes to the ABC and back to us, we certainly welcome uh, Mike's use of the building, but we also have to respect the rights of the neighbors and what's going on before there. So that's my only comment. Any other? Thank you. Ordinance 18-15, the reserve on South Street, PUD. Mr. Matt Pleasant. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. President, Council. For the record, Matt Pleasant with the Economic Community Development Department. Ordinance 1815 is being introduced to you this evening as a rezone from the AGSF1 <coughs> to a PUD uh, named the reserve on the South located at 423 East South Street. This proposal consists of about 13 lots on eight acres and will have scheduled public hearing on June 4th, Planning Commission meeting. And now I'd like to introduce Jesse Pullman of On Point Land Matters, who would be further presenting this. Uh, good evening, President members of the council. Uh, for the record, my name is Jesse Pullman with On Point Land Matters, uh, presenting this evening on behalf of the applicant, uh, Sobzak Construction Services, and with me here this evening is Dave Sobzak and his family. Uh, I'm here to introduce to you the request for the change of zoning for the eight acres located on the north side of South Street, just west of Oak Road, as highlighted by Mr. Pleasant. The property is currently zoned AGSF1 and is not currently incorporated within the city's limits. So as a result, uh, on your, one of your future meetings, you'll see on your agenda uh, the petition for annexation into the city. Uh, as depicted in the presentation exhibits, the requested zonings for a PUD district uh, to be called the Reserve on South and will accommodate the proposed infilled neighborhood of 13 high-end homes, which are anticipated to have price points ranging between $450,000 and $650,000. The property is located within the area designated by the comprehensive plan as downtown. It's located just outside the comprehensive plans Grand Junction District, but it is just to the west as part of the Grand Junction District is the neighborhood subdistrict. So as such, the proposed development proposes residential is consistent with the comprehensive plan as well as the comprehensive plans objectives to obtain and create additional and attract additional households into the downtown area. Uh, prior to the scheduled public hearing on June 4th by the plan commission, We'd like to invite you to an open house that we're hosting for adjacent property owners tomorrow evening at 6.30 at the Lions Club on Jersey Street. And in addition, because this item is just outside the, the sub-district area, the staff's recommended that we present this to the Grand Junction Task Group, which we'll be also doing uh, Wednesday morning at nine o'clock at the DWA offices. Uh, so in closing, um, if you have any questions uh, of us this evening that we can take with us as we move through the public process, We'd be happy to take those and, and try to address them. Otherwise, I'd like to thank you for your time tonight. Thank you, Jesse. Anyone have any comments? I just want to make one comment. I've already sent this to the developer and to the engineer, but there is a drainage issue with the developed, with the housing addition on the south side of the street. So I just wanted to make sure that as this is looked at with additional drainage, that everybody ties all those things in together to see if there's a solution that we could come to. I do have a question for the city also, except for a little piece of land to the east of this, which Jim Anderson owns, with this trail going in here, could someone just update us down the road on the connectivity from the trail that goes in front of the city building all the way to Union Street, how we're gonna connect that? Because everything else now, once this is in, 
is developed ground, and so it's just a matter of when, when that timeline's in. I've had a few questions about that, so. Property will be a problem. Uh, yeah. I was just wondering if there was a timeline because we're pretty close to getting most of it done. Because you can come up, you can come up Oak, cross over, then you'd be right to this pathway going toward Union. And, and uh, 171st is not as, or, or south as it used to be known, it's not really a safe road to traverse by bicycle. So just wondering what our plans are for ground that's not in the development area. But you don't need to answer this tonight. This is something down the road. I just want to have an idea so I can respond to people. All right, any other comments? Just be aware of my comments uh, concerning the front road in garages and mixing out between on the front facade and I was hoping they could have not with this goal from um, the public right of way. Yeah, and, and we appreciate your comments. We've, we've made an attempt to address um, it somewhat, but it sounds like there were some other aspects that you were interested in, so we'll definitely be revisiting that as we continue through the process with you. process we thank you for listening and uh, uh, we'll see where it goes from APC we appreciate it thank you thank you ordinance 1818 Westfield Playhouse PUD mr. Todd thank you mr. president members of the council good evening for the record Kevin Todd with the economic and community development department this item before you this evening is a new planning and development project called the Westfield Playhouse PUD, property located at 220 North Street, just north of City Hall here, approximately a third of an acre in size and is currently zoned SF3. As proposed, the ordinance would default to the Local Business Historic District, or LBH, um, and would allow for the construction and use of a theater building on the subject property. This project is scheduled to be reviewed by the Grand Junction Task Group at its May 16th meeting and is now scheduled to be heard at a public hearing at the Advisory Plan Commission on June the 4th and will return to you at a later date for adoption consideration. At this time, the petitioner, Mr. Tom Smith with Main Street Productions is here this evening and would like to make a brief presentation. Following his comments, I'm available for any questions that you have of staff. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. For the record, I'm Tom Smith. I live at 167 South Cherry in Westfield. I'm here representing the board of directors for Westfield Playhouse, also known as uh, Main Street Productions. Since 2002, uh, Westfield Playhouse has performed approximately 101 shows at their old church site out at Eagle Town, involving actors, directors, producers, crew people, numbering in the thousands, all of whom show up and do this out of the love of the arts completely voluntarily. It's become apparent lately that, that Westfield's downtown is on the cusp of explosion. There's going to be development. I don't know any details about it, but it's pretty clear that there is going to be development and it's very clear that the park is going to be finished Westfield Playhouse wants to join with the city and take part in this. It would be the best thing for Westfield Playhouse. We would be able to uh, double, at least double our seating capacity and our, our ability to, to provide productions. And it will provide the city with an opportunity to offer people to come and have dinner and walk to the theater and then enjoy enjoy things after that 
I mean, and that would be one of the very, very few local theaters who will be able to offer that in the vicinity. Uh, Westfield Playhouse is a part of an organization called Encore, which is a group of suburban theaters that encircle Indianapolis. There are 11 theaters. Out of those 11 theaters, should this take place, Westfield Playhouse would be the only theater that would be able to offer this and make uh, just another, another feather in the cap of the city of Westfield. We also want to engage the schools more in the instruction of dramatic arts, and this would help us there too. I am, I'm open for any questions. I mean, you're all familiar with this project. Uh, does anybody have anything? I don't know, I, I will say that I've been in a number of shows at Westfield Playhouse, and I've attended all of them, and I haven't seen, uh, I haven't seen very many of you in attendance. And I, I'm going to make a special effort in the upcoming uh, months to, to uh, change that situation. Does anybody have any questions for me? Well, I want to say I'm super excited. I can't go into the current building because of the mold. <laughs> <laughs> you asked why I haven't been there. That's why. So <laughs> I, I went in there once and paid dearly. So once this is built, that will be a whole different ballgame, and I'm sure most of us will be there often. So um, looking very forward to it. I did have a question. Um, obviously, this is downtown historic district kind of situation. Um, but there's no parking with this project in 160 feet or 160 feet. Um, and the church is the closest biggest lot. And I'm wondering, has anyone talked to the church? I have there? talked to the church. And uh, they actually were under the impression that they owned this piece of ground, which caused me tremendous consternation. And I, we came back and went over to Jim's and we looked it up and sure enough, the city does own the piece of ground. Well, that was helpful. But I did talk to them about, about it and we have the city parking three lots uh, where the clinic was and then of course behind here, there's two, there's two lots, sorry. There's two lots and then street parking. But when I think about parking, no, we don't have parking in our plan, but I think the ideal situation is having people park in other areas downtown and walking from the theater past all the restaurants downtown and down the side streets. Uh, that, that, that's perfect because then maybe they'll drop in somewhere for a drink or something afterwards. I was more concerned for like handicapped and, and having that accessible because um, right now with the way it's situated, I don't know how that's going to work, how close they could get to the facility to get in. So it's just something I, I was concerned with. Well, we will be paying attention to that as we, as we move along. Um, anything else? I just want to say I think it's a wonderful, wonderful um, idea that you brought forward. And uh, I just appreciate uh, your effort in making us aware uh, and helping us to determine the best way to move forward with this in your group because I think they're such a tremendous asset to this community, to our schools, and and, uh, um, and our visitors. So thank you for your time and effort. Well, it's, thank you for yours, Jim. Jim. Jim's been instrumental in helping me with this, and, uh, um, and without him it would never have done. We needed help in getting through. I mean, you guys are so busy. We needed help in getting through the city process and Jim has provided that help and he does recognize the benefit to the city for having the arts downtown. Is there a neighbor meeting scheduled for this? Hmm? Is there a neighbor meeting scheduled for this one? We have uh, um, John Sampson has asked the uh, the, uh, the, um, the officials at the courthouse in downtown Noblesville for the correct addresses they did not get them to him in time. So hopefully Monday those letters will go out. So you don't have a time yet? Or you do? Oh, the separate ma neighborhood meeting? Mm -hmm. Okay, no, we don't have that yet. I actually never considered that yet. 
Yeah, it's not normally required. That's what the Grand Junction Task Group has served as downtown. So if you can't make that, I'm sure they'll meet with you separately. It's incumbent upon us to make the north side of 32 walkable as well as the south side. And this will help in that. Probably need to be a few more businesses to the north to, to bring that into full bloom. But uh, it's, it's a start. If we can truly make a walkable, it, it will be of great use. Well, I, 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 I didn't answer your question about meeting with the church. Um, they, they were hesitant about opening their lot up to unlimited parking. And so they, they wanted to take that into consideration. I haven't talked to them. That's been about two months ago. So we'll see how that goes. I don't know. Okay. Anybody else? Thank you, Tom. Thank you, sir. Next item uh, up for consideration is Ordinance 1820, Oak Ridge Point, PUD Amendment, Oak Ridge Shops. This is an approved project with some changes. Thank you. Thanks again. Pam Howard with the Economic and Community Development Department. Before you this evening, I have an amendment to the Oak Ridge Point PUD District to accommodate an inline tenant building. This 2.2 acre site is located on the south side of State Road 32, just west of Oak Ridge Road. It is zoned the Oak Ridge Point PUD, which was adopted in 2008, restated in 2011, and recently amended um, earlier this year. The proposed amendment permits an additional curb cut along State Road 32, as well as adjusting some of the architectural and landscaping standards for the site. I do have Jesse Pullman with On Point Land Matters here on behalf of the developer. He does not plan to make a presentation, but is available for questions, as am I, if you have any of our department. Thank you. Thank you. Any comments about this project? I have several, but I feel bad being on after all these questions. But I, anyway, um, I was going to ask a few things. It looks like the site access and circulation is going to be crazy with the two right in and right out on, on um, State Road 32. And then the other one, what is that, 175th? I'm just wondering how, how all the traffic, when you consider that entire area built out, how that's all going to work. Because that's a potential lot going on. The, the state permit has not been submitted yet, and in part, uh, as you know, the State Road 32 overlay typically requires both the council and NDOT to sign off on curb cuts, and in this particular case, because of the, say, the dated nature of this PUD, it set out curb cut locations, which I know the city has, has gone away from on its project. So in short, in this scenario, the amendment is simply not making that limitation to one curb cut apply for it. And then if this is something that does get approved on the amendment side, we'll work through the curb cut permit uh, process with NDOT. And again, as you mentioned, it's just, it's right in, right out. And the idea is trying to avoid that intersection of Oak Ridge Road uh, and State Road 32. And then to accommodate, as you noted on the bottom side, you have 175th Street that will come across that in the original PUD wasn't contemplated. Uh, the existing PUD doesn't require it, exempts it from the current overlay requirement. Uh, however, uh, Travis May, who's with me here today on behalf of uh, the development entity, um, intends to put in 175th Street uh, in the spirit of what the city is trying to accomplish with that access road requirement. Uh, and so the right in, right out really effectively allows for a greater circulation of the site so you're not um, tied into it bunching up right at that right in, right out as uses are, as are, as are coming into the site and have to circle back around, you're able to just come in um, immediately without going to the, the intersection. I also had some preliminary concerns with uh, a second right in, right out there. Okay. But I am. I would just like for the city to weigh in on whether that is they feel that that's appropriate or not. I'm not certainly not a traffic expert. I would just question the need for a second right in, right out uh, in such close proximity. Now it may be that. That's actually preferable, and that's what I would like to know. Uh, that 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 we feel like that would be 
beneficial rather than detrimental. And, and I think we're of the opinion that it would require your, your specific permission for that, for those cuts anyway. So we'll, we'll ferret that out as we go through the process. And to maybe add a level of comfort, what was also filed at the same time was a detailed development plan for the building. So that is also going through the process simultaneously. So if the amendment were to be approved, the development plan for the building would be on the very next plan commission agenda for approval as well. And I'm happy to share that specific, the, the four-sided detailed architectural elevations with you. Um, with that being said, again, because of kind of the data nature of the PUD, the idea was we know what the building is going to look like or we want it to look like and it was simpler cleaner and the picture says a thousand words just to adopt it into the PUD rather than going through and um, for I guess to shorthand it kind of nickel and diamond on the standards and end up with three pages of tweaks and changes to say here's what we want to do and here's what's required as a standard uh, but then with that being said uh, these elevations do substantially comply with what the overlay would require anyway um, but it was one of those, we're to design something that's nice that we like, and then here's what we want to do, and it was just easier to include it in the amendment since we're going through that process anyway. And I'm guessing the detail for the landscape plan is included with the detailed development plan. Correct. Because again, this just says, shall be installed in substantial compliance with the plan, and I mean, we just have a few cross hatches kind of things. Um, don't know what they are, so. Yes, and, and I'm happy to share those with you directly. I do have a comment. There are a lot of complexities to this project, and uh, in, in talking to Phil a little bit and considering the 32 and different things, often we don't comment or we're not involved at this level until it goes to the APC. I think we're going to get probably more involved in this one over the next few days because of the of these things that have been mentioned. So I just want them to know that there's going to be some discussion coming through. Appreciate that. Anyone else? All right. Thank you, Council. Great comments. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to Ordinance 18 21, Spring Mill Grand Station PUD Amendment. And again, this is uh, some changes to an existing uh, PUD. Yes, Thank you. again, Pam Howard with the Economic and Community Development Department. Before you this evening, I have an amendment to the Spring Mill Grand Station Planned Unit Development District. This 4.9 acre PUD district was originally adopted in October of 2017 and is located on the west side of Spring Mill Road, just north of 161st Street. The proposed amendment adjusts some of the architectural standards for the self-storage buildings, as well as incorporates a new concept plan showing rider, wider right-of-way for Spring Mill Road and eliminating the northern entrance to the site. The petitioners have been working with the Spring Mill Station Task Group throughout the process and will continue throughout the rest of the development process. I do have members of the development team here to answer any questions you may have. I'm also available if you have any of staff. Thank you. This was also... Uh presented to the Spring Mill Station Group, and it's my understanding that uh, they uh, agree with these changes. They're fine with the items that are... Yes, there have been... Um, the uh, layout changes are uh, new since the task group meeting, so they will be reaching back out, and that was the, um, the accommodation of the wider right-of-way on the site and the elimination of the northern entrance. So they, they will be speaking to the task group again just to get um, okay. a second approval their comments being aired in the record and that that be considered by APC. Any 
questions? And the provision on using additional LED lighting for that um, monument sign, is that currently used on the other uh, signs in Seamus Station? Uh, that is proposed to be used on the new signs at the southeast corner that have not been um, installed yet, but they're proposing the same type of LED down lighting just to get a little bit further than the goosenecks will allow at the top. Thank you. That concludes our agenda items at this time. Uh, if we have residents who wish to address the council on items not on the agenda, they may do so at this time. And presently, I have one card, uh, Ms. Sharon Williams. I'm Sharon Williams. I live at 807 East State Road 32. That's about four lots uh, east of Oak Ridge Road. Okay. Uh, most of the time I'm in here for floodplain issues. I'm still, I will still be in here for floodplain issues until my property is sold. I did file a um, theft charge with uh, the Hamilton County Sheriff's Department. May the Ninth, I think it was Thursday, um, and I did mail certified mail to the Justice Department Consumer Protection Agency and the Attorney General. I uh, wrote to FEMA and whatever else. There was an approval given to uh, the developer that wants to build the Starbucks on the corner of uh, Oak Ridge Road and State Road 32. Okay. And also, there was a permission given to build a road. Okay, it's going to be done on my property. Now, in, two, in the, about the year 2000, the drain guy, uh, Ward, uh, dredged that uh, Anna Kendall drain uh, around the year 2000, and he took pieces of the property of uh, all the people just to the west of me. Okay, and he could, they cut in pretty deep when they did that that time. And uh, that area has always flooded. It will flood to the point that it is about 20 feet deep and about 40 feet wide. It would take a small child clear to Cool Creek in um, Carmel and drown them. Now, so the flood issue, although most of the time it's dry, and I, most of the people don't even notice it, but it is an issue and it has always been an issue for 53 years. And that's why I'm always up here to complain because you're gonna start moving that ground. And you're gonna get, give the developers and the uh, builders approval to do whatever they wanna do. Then um, the, there is a flood issue. And uh, I would like to mention again, the builders and the developers in um, Texas, Houston, Texas, gave the builders and developers uh, approval to build numerous homes, very fine homes. Um, the building, I'm not, were nice, okay. But all of those homes flooded. It put, I don't know how many people out of homes and they were destitute. Some people could afford flood insurance and others could not, which was a permit to make people go to the poorhouse, just like it was in England where people, because they were so poor, they went to poor man's prison. All of those people that went to poor man's prison, there were just, were then, <coughs> by the legal representatives, sent to Australia to live. Now, I don't find this an appropriate way to run any city or country or state. That is malfeasance. The uh, malfeasance on the part of Ward to dredge that ditch to the south on the other people's property was malfeasance. It um, is disgusting that people would actually approve of such a thing. 
the um, approval <coughs> to um, do the, um, I was sent a letter by the Department of Natural Resources on the development that's going in. The application was FW29027, and it was a permit to build a road in the back of my house. But that road is on my property. I don't care what kind of easement you think you've got, but that's my property. And since it was already taken in the year 2000, I don't think you can take it again. You can't steal it again. All right. Thank you for your comments. They're duly noted. Uh, well, I don't want them answered because I'm not leaving until that property sold. And so it's going to be an issue continuously. Go ahead. It's going to go to court as far as I'm concerned. All right. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Does anyone else have any comments tonight for council? Mr. President, I would like to thank Tammy and John for their work on OpenGov. They did a lot of work that nobody saw, and uh, it's, it's come to fruition, and it'll be good for the community. Be good for us, too. All right, thank you. I have uh, three comments I'd like to make, and uh, we'll take care of the first order of business. But um, we need to, as a body, appoint a representative to the new Builder Architectural Review Board as part of the commitments to the um, uh, Westchester development around the golf course that passed through this body uh, a couple of months ago. And our appointment uh, would be from an APC member who would, uh, who would volunteer to um, serve. And so um, I entertain some thoughts on that. Um, I would recommend Randy Graham who is available. And uh, the purpose of this board would be In the commitments, the new Builder Architectural Review Board is an architectural review board consisting of three members to be comprised of the developer, which is Paul Rio, a resident of Washington Township as appointed by the trustee of Washington Township, and the trustee appointed um, Dr. Bruce Venata to that board. And then we, as a body, the Westfield Council, would have uh, the third appointment, and it has to be a member of the plan commission as recorded in the commitments. So, any discussion? I think we can just do a sort of a voice vote. Yeah, I would support Randy Graham if he's willing to do it. Okay. I concur with that and be happy to move forward with him taking on this responsibility. Can we agree that uh, then Randy Graham would be appointed to this new Builder Architectural Review Board? Signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, our appointment's made then. Uh, the second item is that uh, we are, we, um, Citizens Water is working with communities in, uh, there's certainly the, the Marion County unit and then they have facilities uh, in the Donut Counties that they operate the water works. Um, and um, there are other water companies that supply the area like American Water in Noblesville, et cetera. Carmel has their own water system. But it was thought that a unified um, kind of um, ordinance where in this case the mayor could declare a, a water warning would be prudent in that uh, if we go through a dry season there would be uh, four stages of warning but it would make the system uniform throughout the Donut Counties and uh, Marion. Well we are fortunate to have adequate water supply some other communities don't but this would sort of uh, be a conservation mode and would not require uh, mandatory uh, 
things that would be voluntary compliance, but we're taking a look at that. And I'd like the counselors, I sent some information to you, put it in your boxes. I'd like uh, counselors to consider this and we'll bring it back as a council introduction next month. Um, and we'll talk more about that. But I wanted the public to be aware of that um, as well. Um, and then the last thing I have is that uh, we will be holding a special meeting on April 4th, and that'll be before the, at 6 p.m. here in this chamber. Right. Or I mean June, sorry. That's, that makes more sense, doesn't it? Thank you. June 4, before the APC meeting at 6 o'clock um, to handle um, an Osborne Trails uh, follow-up. So there's one item on that agenda, so I'd like to make the public aware of that. And then um, that concludes my comments. Anyone I've got, else? Uh, I got APC, APC uh, update. I'll be brief. Uh, APC met last Monday evening and uh, sent a positive recommendation to this body on the Davis PUD. That was, there were a few modifications made or additional commitments made as a result of that meeting, so the uh, coming to this body was delayed by a couple weeks to make sure we get all those uh, things correct. So that'll probably be on our agenda at our next meeting. And Steve, if I could interrupt, we're, we're going to try to get those out well in advance so you have plenty of time to look at them. There's a lot to them, I think. Okay. Uh, there were public hearings held on several items. Uh, the Wheeler Landing PUD District. The, uh, a development plan and site plan for the IMMI campus public hearing held on the landing at Monon Marketplace for a development plan and site plan review. Uh, same with Sutter's Manor, which is a small new um, subdivision that goes in kind of as in the middle of the other Sutter's uh, subdivisions in Westfield. Uh, no zoning changes are required there. This was a development plan and site plan reviews who held a public hearing on that and that was it so I have one comment uh, wife and I were out riding bikes on the Midland and came up behind the public safety building and saw the new splash park uh, and lots of families there on a third early on a Thursday evening so uh, I'd like to thank whomever designed that because it really looks attractive and well used so please pass on to those who were involved with that. I haven't seen the other parks. I know there's some uh, renovation going on in other places too, uh, but that one is complete and, and being used and it's really beautiful. All right, anyone else? Jim, you might clarify, I believe that the, uh, the special meeting on the fourth is in lieu of our second meeting that will not occur. That's, that's a good point. So we will not be holding a meeting, a second meeting in the month of May. Right. Yeah, yeah, good, thanks. Uh, Mark, I appreciate your comments on the parks. And Phil, where, what else we got? Ace of Bales at the south end, you got a big, I see a lot of work going on up there, and the north end also. Sticking with Public Works, I hear you had a huge bulk trash day. Bigger than we've ever seen before. A little bit too big. <laughs> I wonder where we all come up with that stuff, don't you? Well, I, I heard uh, unsolicited from a couple people came up to me and said, yeah, we took a bunch of stuff over there. And it was busy, but the traffic was well or, uh, organized, Joel's people uh, getting people in and out. So good. We do that, what, twice a year now? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, about a week and a half ago, we were very honored. Uh, it was, it was kind of low profile. It really wasn't a public affair, but uh, Governor Holcomb uh, was here in town uh, at the invitation of uh, one of our 
local companies, the uh, Carr family at Custom Concrete, and along with his entourage and uh, Susan Brooks, Congresswoman Brooks was here, and they were had a had a really a two-hour meeting uh, discussing um, that subject that is uh, of concern to us all right now, and that is developing uh, and training a workforce. And we also talked about uh, not only uh, do we have need to have training programs, but we're going to have training programs, we have to have folk to train. And there was a pretty good discussion about cities and creating places so that we can lure people here so they can be employed locally and uh, trained and retrained if necessary in our local jobs. So that was, uh, that, that was, it was real interesting to hear the, the governor's take on where all of the the training aspects are going. Uh, as you heard, I think it was last week, after many, many years of uh, starts and stops, it sounds like a YMCA is becoming closer to being a reality. Uh, they still need to go through their, their fundraising, which they've researched thoroughly and believe everything there is in order, but it's going to be a very welcome addition, not only to our residents, <coughs> Uh, working with the schools to develop an auditorium uh, for school use and also potentially an auditorium by combining those two forces that could work right into our business of sports at, at Grand Park. So it's really, uh, really should be a very exciting facility and it sounds like it's going to happen sooner rather than later. And lastly, uh, several months ago, I had asked the Westfield Washington Historical Society to perhaps do a display out in the hallway of a uh, Grand Park event center on the subject of the history of sports in Westfield. And I uh, got to see last week their uh, mock-up that they had done uh, professionally. Uh, I'm excited to tell you it's uh, it's very large. It'll go in the main hallway. It's kind of a three-dimensional with uh, some real interesting photographs and some brief discussions of the, of the history of Westfield and the sports history of Westfield. And in the, the center picture is a team that I think you will be absolutely surprised at what sport this photograph is of this team uh, very early uh, in the 1900s. They hope to have that up in about four to six weeks. Fantastic. Thank you, Mayor. At this time, I entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Aye. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 We stand adjourned. Thank you.